Hi, James Hardiman here, and here's another of my series of mini videos about using SketchUp as a design tool for CNC. And uh, this is part of a series that I'm going to call From SketchUp to ShopBot. Um, in my workshop, I want to make a, a bench to do some electronics work on, and this is the design that I've come up with. And I want it to be pretty sturdy, so we've got uh, 300 mil uh, legs which I'm just going to make out of fence posts but all the rest is made out of 18 mil ply at the top and these uh, the front piece there back piece uh, only having legs at the front I'm going to screw this to the wall of my workshop which is wood and three cross braces and halving joints uh, in the corners you can see like that so that's the design of the, the bench uh, what I want to show in this video is how we actually get to cut this out. So I've made a copy of this and pulled it to one side. All these pieces, by the way, are components. Um, then I've taken it to, to pieces and laid all those pieces out. This rectangle here is uh, 2440 by 1220 uh, millimeters, the UK equivalent of an 8x4 sheet or the metric equivalent of an 8x4 sheet. Uh, and I've laid all these out with uh, a gap of I think it's 7 millimeters, which is a bit more than a quarter inch. Uh, and I'm going to use a, a quarter inch bit to cut these out. So there they all are. And what I want to do is to show how we get this uh, from this form into. Um, into a form that VCarve Pro can handle and we can actually cut out. So the first thing I'm going to do is save this file and then I'm going to save it as uh, electronic bench for DXF. And uh, yes, I've done this before, so I'll overwrite that. Okay, so now the first thing that um, we need in the DXF is we don't need all this stuff. So that can go and we don't need this outline that's not a 3d shape but it's just a 2d outline so we can get rid of that and we can get rid of its edges as well okay so what's left is the pieces of wood that i actually want to cut out of my uh, 8x4 sheet now on vectric pro it actually prefers that we work, as it were, in landscape mode. So the first thing I'm going to do is rotate this through 90 degrees. And because I'm going to want to be on the origin, I will start uh, here. No, come on there, that'll do. Uh, and let's rotate that around. And uh, happier if we are actually at the origin. So I'll use the move command. And I'll come in from that bottom corner and bring it over to the origin. Good, we're in good shape. Now the next thing is that this is 3D and it's important that it was 3D so we could look at it in SketchUp uh, and know that it was what we wanted to do. But the, um, the CNC machine doesn't care about 3D. In particular, it doesn't care about 3D here. There are no part holes or fancy um, carving. We're just cutting this out. So the first thing I'm going to do, all these are components. And again, the VCAR program doesn't care about components. So I'm just going to explode everything. Uh, then the next thing that the VCAR program doesn't care about is faces. So I'm going to take off the top face and the bottom face of each of these pieces. I'm just clicking and pressing the delete key, top face, bottom face. Top face, bottom, bottom, bottom. That's interesting. That one was colored inside. So now I've got rid of the edges. And I could go around and get rid of all the edges. But, uh, and we don't, all we want is two dimensions here. Uh, so we don't need top surfaces. And in fact, if we have top surfaces, it just confuses everything when we get to VCarve Pro, and I'll talk a bit more about that. But if we look at it absolutely edge on and very carefully draw an elastic box around everything and press delete, all the edges have gone and all we've got left is these little sticks sitting up 
And if we come at those very nicely edge on, we can take the eraser and just go through and erase them all. And as I'm doing this, I'll notice how nice and smoothly I can move around this model. And that's because I've got a Connections 3D mouse. And I like it so much, I wish I was uh, an agent for them. But I'm not. I'm just telling you that it's a great thing. OK, so we've taken all those bits away and all we've got left are these lines. And this is what we're going to send over to VCarve Pro to use with SketchUp. So I'm going to save this as something yet again. Uh, I'm going to save it as Electronics Bench for DSX, DXF2D. Uh, it doesn't matter what you save it as. This is just what I've decided to do. And uh, yes, we'll override it. Now, we now export this as DXF. And there's a plugin for that. And if you don't know how to get that plugin, just Google it. I'm not going to explain it because a million other people have already explained it. But I've got this um, plugin. Um, so I'm going to export to DS, DXF or SDL. And the first thing it says is you haven't selected anything. Yes, we're going to export the entire model in millimeters. And we're going to export it as lines. And if everything goes, oh, and where are we going to do that? Um, electronics bench for DXF untitled dot DXF. Oh, no, that's, that's the one I want, 2D. Electronics bench for DXF 2D dot DXF. Over, yes. Uh, and it tells us that it exported 52 lines, and it hasn't ignored anything, and it hasn't exposed any faces, which is fine because there aren't any. OK, so that's it. It's exported as a DXF. Now we go to VCarve Pro, which is on my cluttered desk top somewhere. Here we are. And the first thing we're going to do is create a new file. And I've done this before, so it's already come up that it's 2440 by 1220. It's 18 mil. And I say OK. And there's my uh, piece of plywood. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import vectors. And it's this one here that I've just exported. And hey presto, there it is. However, there are some problems. And the best way of seeing these problems is if we click one of these lines, we were kind of expecting, or I hope you were expecting, that that whole thing would have been selected. But it's not selected. These are all separate vectors. They are what VCarve Pro calls open vectors. So what we do is we surround that whole area like so and make sure that nothing else is highlighted. And then we come to this icon down here, which is called Join Open Vectors. And when we click it, it says at the moment we have zero closed vectors. We have four open vectors. We can set this tolerance. Um, I had some problems earlier, so I set it really big, but that's fine. And it says after we've joined them, we'll have one closed vector and none open. So when we say join, it says it's done it. And now if we click any part of this, it selects the whole thing. And this is the really vital step. Uh, if you don't do this, you're going to have problems. So here's the next one. I've zoomed in so that I can surround it. Yep, that's work. Joined open vectors. At the moment, we've got 12 open and zero closed. We join them. And now, if we click anywhere in here, the whole thing is selected. And if you've got a highly complex thing to do, what you could do is you could probably set this tolerance much lower and join the, the whole lot all in one. But I've only just discovered this, and I haven't got a particularly complicated thing. So I haven't experimented with that. And I'm just doing these shapes one at a time. Join, and lastly, 
join. And let's just experiment by selecting everything. And now it says we've got six closed vectors, which is the tabletop well, is one, two, three, four, five, six. Brilliant. Job done. So having done that, we can now go and start doing our tool pathing. And what we can do here is just surround the whole lot. Uh, we'll choose a profile. And it's currently set up that we're going to start at zero, cut to 18.2, which is probably a bit over generous. And I'll probably chew up my um, sacrificial bed. So let's actually make that 18.05. Uh, that should be enough. Uh, I'm going to use a quarter inch bit and we're going to do two passes and maybe quarter inch bit I should do it a bit slower but um, I'll do that um, chip rate calculation a bit later on. Going around the outside uh, need tabs so let's see let's go for um, five millimeter tabs and two millimeters is a bit thin isn't it let's go for uh, let's go for five millimeters on those as well and 3D and let's edit them. Let's add the tabs uh, and have a look at where they are. Well, I think we probably need more than this great big piece like that. Uh, this is right on the edge. I'm not sure whether that was a good idea, but that's how I've got it at the moment. Um, something you need to think about is down here this is going to be a little piece of wood that gets cut out. Uh, and as soon as that's cut out, it's going to rattle around. So I think we probably need to come in and maybe add a tab here and here and possibly there and line these up and come down. I think we'll add tabs there and get rid of that one and add tabs there get rid of that one that's on an edge so we can get rid of that that's on an edge move that over move that over um, let's make sure that nothing's going to fall out and rattle here and uh, maybe here Move this up, and again, this piece of wood here. I don't want that rattling around, so I think we'll go here and here, and here and here. Let's move that over, and let's line these up. And go here and here and here, maybe there and there as well. Let's see how that looks. I'm no expert, but that doesn't look too bad to me. So let's close that and let's calculate it. It's saying, hey, you're going to cut all the way through. And I say that's fine. And now let's slow it down a little bit and preview it and here goes two cuts of those two cuts of that two cuts of that and the big piece job done and if we chip it over we can see all the tabs on the underside and there we go. So there's my piece of 8x4 ply cut with all the components necessary to make my electronics bench. It looks like that. And that's an introduction going from SketchUp to ShopBot.